introduction. So my name is Daniel Gontal, I'm a professor at the University of Tartlider in Glasgow and I have also an affiliation at the University of Trento. So this uh, work today is about uh, a logical inference, based on logical inference, uh, and uh, it's made uh, in collaboration with the Professor Bank of the University. And uh, I would say that most of the third work uh, was made by uh, some of my students, uh, and particularly Denise and Andrea Carlo and uh, Daniel that are currently uh, randomly distributed uh, uh, among Toronto, uh, Portland, and, and New Jersey. And yeah, what is the motivation of this work? Uh, we were talking about uh, Tartu as monitoring, and uh, from the logical point of view, Tartu as monitoring is basically uh, using information from a sensor to infer logical <coughs> state of a structure. So it is all about making trends, uh, and uh, this is normally done based on certain information. Uh, we really enjoyed the yesterday presentation by Professor Beck, uh, that, uh, and we all agree uh, in this room, uh, I presume, uh, that Bayesian uh, inference is uh, really the proper way to understand uh, what is uh, uh, to, to handle on certain information to get the, the uh, correct uh, condition state of a structure. Uh, however, um, I would say that I observed that in my uh, experience and interaction, in, uh, educational interaction with other practical engineers, that uh, uh, most of the other engineers are often struggle uh, uh, to understand what are the concept, uh, how to apply properly by using inference, uh, simply because they don't have uh, Solid background uh, in, uh, in Bayesian statistics. And uh, very often they uh, uh, prefer to make inference units using the heuristic or the uh, proper logical inference method. Uh, that we are picked because platform uh, engineers are, uh, when they are in front of a platform engineer problem, they use uh, uh, very sophisticated uh, models, uh, many degree of field model with a lot of non linearity. It's very curious that uh, in front of this complexity, they are still using quite a great method for doing things. So, uh, what we would like to propose today is uh, a method for easy logical inference based on a formal analogy between the mechanics and Bayesian logic. And uh, uh, I will show you how this can apply in some uh, <coughs> cases starting from a single degree of field of single to a multi-parameter case. So, let's start very easy. Let's start with uh, uh, the easier possible uh, inference problem and say that we want to infer parameter theta and uh, based on a set of uncertain information, y1, y2, y3. And uh, the assumption that we can use to start uh, are that everything is Gaussian, everything is linear, so nothing can be easier. So, for example, uh, say that uh, we want to estimate what is the mean value of a complex trend. Uh, at uh, CM, and uh, based on three samples that uh, we have sampled from uh, uh, complex factors, uh, from a bridge, for example, and uh, let's make some assumptions say that, for example, the uh, ten variability of concrete uh, is uh, common to these two, uh, the standard deviation of five megapascal, and uh, say that we have no prior information about uh, the concrete class. So we will, we will photo such a problem with what we probably are doing, uh, what to do is that we use uh, the uh, classical uh, inverse variance rule that apply when we, everything is uh, in and housing. And so for example, the inverse variance of the parameter that we want to uh, infer is just the sum of the inverse variance of each information. So in this case, it's very, it is very, very uh, critical the problem because uh, we end up understanding that the standard deviation of uh, FCM is basically uh, the standard deviation of the variability of concrete divided by the square root of 3. And uh, if we want to refer in a general sense uh, what is the, uh, the, the uh, big value of our parameter, the general rule uh, is to apply the inverse variance rule, so whereby the uh, the parameter is uh, the weighted average of all the information using the first variance as a, as a weight. So in this case, again, the solution is very trivial because the uh, variance of all the information is the same and so corresponds to the, to the uh, average of our information. 
Okay, but uh, in general sense, uh, however, when everything is linear on Gaussian, we can use uh, quite simple rules uh, for making inference. Uh, so the first rule is the inverse variance rule. So the inverse variance of the parameter is the sum of the inverse variance of each information. And uh, the uh, mean value uh, of the parameter is the uh, weighted average of the information uh, using the inverse variance as a weight. And uh, when we have a piece of information that uh, is affected by multiple sources of uncertainty, we can also use a second inference rule, which is basically what we call the, the error propagation rule. So the variance of an information is the sum of the variance of each uh, source of uncertainty uh, into the information. Okay, then to make uh, this, uh, everything uh, more simple, uh, let's uh, define uh, um, Let's define a quantity W, which is basically the inverse variance of an information or a, of a parameter. So W is like a weight because we're using the inverse variance for weighting our information. And uh, uh, let's call it, uh, well, this quantity has already many names. For example, we normally can call it uh, Fisher information. But uh, for this case, let's call it uh, accuracy. That will give you the um, practical sense of this quantity. So the variance is basically the uh, uh, measure of our uncertainty about a uh, uh, about parameter. So the inverse variance is basically our accuracy, is the measure of how well we know our parameters. So if we write the first, uh, the inverse variance rule using accuracy as a parameter, so we find out that uh, the accuracy of the parameter is simply the sum of the accuracy of this information that we use to and the uh, mean value of the parameter is uh, simply the weighted average of uh, our information using the policy as a weighting factor. So if we look at this equation with the eye of a civil engineer or a structural engineer, we will probably recognize uh, in this equation, you know, the same equation that we are using uh, for calculating the equivalent stiffness uh, of a system of spring parallel. Right? So, and the, if we take the second inference rule, the error propagation rule, so now we write uh, uh, the inverse accuracy is the sum of the inverse accuracy of all the information. So, this reminds me very, very closely the equivalent stiffness of a set of strings in parallel. So, in the actually, we have made, a, uh, we have just observed some kind of correspondence between the world of mechanics and the world of logic. And we can, as a engineer, exploit to make in France in a more complicated situation. <laughs> so, the, 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 the statement of this mechanical equivalence is basically this. So, imagine that the parameter we want to infer, we want to identify, is a sliding bar. So, the position of this bar is the value of the parameter we want to identify. Okay? We get that information through monitoring about this parameter. It's like uh, bounding this bar to that piece of information using a spring. And the spring, uh, the thickness of the spring uh, is the accuracy of our information. The more accurate, the more accurate is the uh, information, the stiffer is our spring. And uh, if we have information that is uh, subjected to many sources of uncertainty, so in this case it's like attaching our bar to our spring, uh, uh, to a set of spring uh, in parallel, and uh, each spring is basically one of so, what is uncertainty? What is inference in this case? Uh, so, the expected uh, value posterior of our parameter is basically the position of the bar at equilibrium when we are attached to all the information to our system. And uh, the uh, variance posterior for our system is basically the stiffness, the mechanical, uh, the, uh, the flexibility of our system uh, once everything is at equilibrium. Okay, so these are the, uh, this, this is basically our mechanical analogy. So in the world of logic, accuracy and the or inverse variance correspond in mechanics to stiffness, and uh, in the variance correspond to flexibility mechanics. Any observation correspond to, to uh, a spring with a particular square tension, which is the value of our observation, and the expected value of the parameter we want to infer corresponds to the position.
mission act of liberal of our God. Using uh, this idea, for example, we can see uh, some system uh, where uh, we have a single uh, observation for our parameter, here we have three uncorrelated information for our parameter, and here we have a single information subjected to multiple sources of uncertainty. And uh, for example, using the same analogy, we can, uh, 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 you know, make, make a picture of a Bayes theorem and find a mechanical equivalent of Bayes theorem. So Bayes theorem basically tells us that the posterior distribution of the parameter is basically the likelihood uh, distribution times the prior distribution, everything divided by evidence, and the evidence is given by the complicated integral that is sometimes very hard to calculate. However, if we uh, use a mechanical equivalent to, 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 uh, to trust our uh, Bayes theorem, this is very simple because it's basically so the, the posterior uh, uh, value of our parameter is the position of this bar, and uh, this bar is bonded by two uh, <coughs> one is the likelihood, and the other one is the prior information. Okay, so let's go back to the introductory example and uh, say we wanted to identify the uh, posterior distribution of our uh, unknown FCM. Okay, so again, so if you want to use a, even a prior information in this case, we can, uh, uh, we can make a picture of a mechanical system that reproduces exactly the inference problem. And so the uh, parameter that we want to identify is the position of this bar, and uh, this is bounded by the three information, that are the three samples that we have uh, uh, extracted from the sample, and, uh, the, and also by the prior information that we may have on the concrete. Uh, when we have an uh, indirect test, uh, uh, normally the handling of the indirect test is a little bit uh, more complicated. This is because uh, when an indirect test, like a pull-out test or um, a, a Swiss hammer impact test, uh, for example, they don't give you uh, directly the value of the parameter you want to identify, but they give you something which is uh, somewhat related to that. And uh, the source of uncertainty can be uh, can be can be uh, can be higher. So, for example, typically in an indirect test, uh, there is not only the uh, uh, an uncertainty related uh, to the normal variability of concrete, uh, but we may also have a bias error into uh, that is uh, inherent to our method, and then we may have a random scatter in all the tests. And you know, a problem in dealing with the indirect test uh, is that we have to take proper into account of the correlation or in correlation between this information. For example, the bias is common, is an error which is, uh, which is systematic, so it's common and correlated with all the data we're carrying out, while the random scatter is purely correlated. And uh, the inner variability <coughs> concrete is locally correlated, but in general, incorrelated. And uh, so, for example, say that we want uh, to carry out uh, six different pull-out tests from two different locations of the bridge. Now, that would be a little bit complicated because uh, the three tests carried out in this location are correlated uh, and, uh, and, and locally correlated in terms of uh, fatal quantities, but, uh, in, uh, but in correlated in terms of random error. And, uh, for example, if we are using the mechanical equivalence to reproduce this system, this is very simple, so we end up with this, uh, uh, with this uh, trio of, of, um, of things uh, that uh, clearly display all the correlation in the in this bias. Um, uh, what happens if we extend this system to a multiple parameter identification problem? Okay, let's start uh, uh, thinking to the uh, linear Gaussian uh, uh, situation. So, uh, the uh, Gaussian multivariate distribution. Uh, as this expression, and uh, if you look at the exponential term of the, uh, uh, of the multivariate distribution, uh, again, the Tuffman the, the here we the note that uh, that term is, is very, very similar to the mechanical potential energy that we're using in Tuffman mechanics. So, it's, uh, uh, the exponential term is basically the log of the distribution of our, uh, of our system, and uh, the analogy in the, in the more general your film system uh, read in this way, the log of distribution is the potential energy mechanics, uh, the parameter we want to identify are the degree of freedom of the mechanical system, 
covariant matrix is the flexibility matrix in mechanics, and we get Boltz matrix of the Fisher information, is the difference matrix in mechanics. And uh, so, for solving a, a, a multi parameter uh, linear Gaussian integration problem, uh, so we can simply write down this uh, uh, you know, potential energy using all the information that we have, all the prior information that we have, and solve exactly uh, in the case of mechanical system. We can first calculate the, the, uh, uh, the future information and the matrix, which is the, at the essence of the uh, potential energy and the, the inverse of this matrix in the, in the, in the variance matrix, that we are the particular variance matrix of our system. And uh, if we found uh, the stationarity, the equilibrium position uh, of, uh, of our system is well, the, 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 the potential energy is stationary, so this D bars the effective value of the yoga. Of our parameter. A simple application, let's say we want to calculate the elongation trend of a, of a cable or a cable tape bridge. These are the data acquired over the time, so this is a simple uh, um, linear fitting problem uh, using, uh, when we're using a web by using approach for doing that. The parameter we want to identify are two, the intercept of our pipeline uh, and, uh, and its slope. And uh, the, the mechanical equivalent uh, is, uh, can be seen as a rigid bar, free to slide and rotate into the space, uh, and uh, the, uh, the prior information on the, on the linear trend can be seen as a, as a rotational spring with, a, with an appropriate thickness uh, or two acid, and uh, all the information that are gathered over the time are spring connected uh, to the spring. And so the equilibrium position of the spring will provide us the particular distribution of uh, our of, uh, our parameters. Uh, last thing, uh, okay, we have talked so far about uh, uh, linear Gaussian distribution, and uh, we have observed uh, that uh, we can uh, we can basically uh, uh, you know model the uh, uh, linear Gauss, uh, Gaussian information as a linear elastic spring, which uh, has a, has a parabolic potential, which has uh, a restoring force, which is linear, and uh, as a Stiffness, which is independent on its displacement, independent on its stretch. So, what happens if uh, the distribution is not Gaussian? You can use exactly the same logic and say a non Gaussian distribution, an information with a non Gaussian distribution, as a correspondent to a non linear spring. And a non linear spring, uh, which has a, has a potential energy which corresponds again to the log distribution of our spring. Which has a rectoring force that corresponds to the first derivative of the, the log distribution and which has a stiffness that changes the displacement that corresponds to the same derivative of the potential energy. So, for example, if you want to recount the problem of uh, understanding what is the, uh, the, the, the most likely value, uh, the, the particular value of uh, our, our concrete resistance, this time we're using log normal distribution, so we have to introduce a uh, Non-linear element, a non-linear spring that has a restoring force which corresponds to the first derivative of the uh, of the log distribution of our our uh, uh, of our log normal distribution. Okay, and so it's basically the system it can be solved exactly using a non-linear finite model, exactly like uh, any other problem. So <coughs> conclusions. Uh, so. Software monitoring so requires us to make inference uh, under certain information, and uh, very often software engineering uh, are unfamiliar with Bayesian logic, uh, and uh, they tend to make inference with heuristics. So, uh, what we try to do is to propose an uh, uh, easy method to uh, do inference, uh, which is rigorous uh, and which is based on the formal analysis between Bayesian logic on one side and uh, software mechanics on the other. So using this method, we can solve any complex linear problem, even with the complex correlation between variables and even with non gaussian distribution. And the solution is found using the same method that we're using in classical quantum mechanics, including finite model this one. So here on, we have been using ANSYS or Abacus to solve a classical problem, but we just learned that we can use ANSYS or Abacus to make even logical inference in a proper way.